Welcome to Echoes International Podcast, with teaching, interviews and stories of what God is doing straight from the mission field and also within the UK. For more podcasts, stories and opportunities to get involved, check out our website at echoesinternational.org.uk and our other social media channels. Uh, good morning, and it's uh, very nice to uh, uh, be with you. Uh, thank you for coming to uh, hear a bit more about the work at Chit or Chitoka Loki. Um, the uh, uh, yeah, yeah, most of us just call it Chit. I'm sorry if some of you have already seen some of the, the slides. I have only 25 minutes, so. I just can't fit anything into 25 minutes, so uh, anybody who's been listening to me know that I can't even fit anything into an hour. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have to be right today on time. So I'll try and cut the things as, uh, as, as quickly as I can. So let's see where we are. Chitoka Loki, Zambia. Uh, Munahan Di Mwani. Uh, if there's any Lunder speakers, don't pay any attention to that, but it means, uh, are you alive? And I've been saying it's a great word for a doctor. It's a Lunder greeting, are you alive? So, Muna Handi Mwani, and I trust at 11 o'clock, you can all say, Ayo Mwani, or whatever it is, <laughs> that you're very much alive. Uh, the Lunda language is a very interesting one, and uh, our sister Vera, Vera Hook, who just passed away a, a few days ago, uh, they were telling me that she was singing um, uh, a Lunda chorus a few days before she went to be with, uh, with the Lord Jesus. So a lot of, quite a number of people do know it. That, that's the Victoria Falls. And uh, let's just uh, uh, look at these verses. Uh, turn to the book of James, uh, chapter 4. James chapter 4, if you have the Bible with you there. And 14 says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And uh, I like James, because James is a very practical book. And James gets right to the a kernel of the matter. He says, doesn't waste any time. What is your life? And the answer is, it's short. You can get many answers to that question from various people, but your life is short. It's like a vapor. We live in the banks of the Zambezi River, and in the morning you can see the mist over the river, and you go back at lunchtime and it's gone and gone. And that's like our life. God says it's short. You might not think that, but looking back now, uh, our life just seems to go like, has gone like a flash, and we've been quite a number of years our, our sister Betty's been out in Zambia for 46 years, and yet it just has gone very, very, very quickly. So, young person today in our meeting, uh, what about your life? Remember, it's short. And what are you doing with your life, is the question. And you see, I'll not turn to this, just, we'll just read it there. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Ye are bought with a price. What did our hymn say? Each of us, we are the purchase of blood, the blood of God's own Son. God had only one Son, and he gave him for you and for me. And uh, what are you doing with your life? Are you glorifying God with that life of yours? Or are you just living for yourself? Look at the lovely sky here, the Chitoka Loki, and uh, it's the heavens declare the glory of God. We know that. But the heavens are, it was, they, it didn't cost God too much to put them there. His mouth, he just, the breath of his mouth, and, but they just sit there. It's a different thing with you and me, because you and I have to make a conscious decision to glorify God, to use our lives for something in his service. And that would be my cha little challenge to you this morning. Are you glorifying God with your life? And you know what it says in scripture, that they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. The Bible tells us that we are the light of the world. And you know, there's so much darkness today. Uh, it's so important that there's light shining in that darkness. And you and I 
are the lights of this world. So let's live up to our responsibilities. <clears throat> that's Zambia, and that's uh, where I'll be talking about. Tidogaluki, uh, Savuma, Deepalata. I'm just going to confine myself to those three areas for the sake of time, quite close to Angola. And I think that's all I'd say. It's a Central African country. That's the president, uh, Hakainde Hichilema. And could I ask you to pray for our president? He is, um, as far as we can tell, he's a believer, and he's doing his best to keep the country on a righteous course. Um, pray for, he's known by everyone as HH, HH, so that's easy to remember. Um, her brother Harry Hunter was saying to me one day there that it's easy for him to remember his, his initials. Population is 18 million, official language is English, and 70 local languages, Lunda and Luvali, are the two in our area. And uh, if you're going to really get to know the people, you have to know some of their language. I'm not a great linguist, but I do my best to speak the language. And they must have heard I'm coming back soon because they've put me down to speak on Christmas Day. And that, that will be in Lunda. <laughs> That's the only booking I have. <laughs> um, Central Africa was a former British colony. And so language, English, it's had independence since 1964. Peaceful. I'm very thankful for that. And a nice place to come. You're all very welcome if you ever make it out. Most of the assembly work has been concentrated in the northwest province or up in the northern province. But there are assemblies scattered throughout the area. Uh, that's us, believe it or not. And uh, the, the thing is, uh, life is short. And, uh, you know, th this year I celebrated my, I became a pensioner. And... Uh, we were 31 years in Africa, and it just seems to have gone like that, just, just like a flash. You can talk to Betty, she's, she's not mind me telling you her birthday yesterday, so 80, 84, and pretty fast, just, just like that. And yet, what a joy to have served God for those years in, in Africa. We should serve God everywhere. You don't have to serve him in Africa, but wherever you are, let's be, all be serving our Lord Jesus, because he's such a wonderful Savior. Um, I've had the, I decided or asked God early in life when well, I was in my teenage years what did he want me to do I wanted to be an engineer but to my surprise the answer came back I was to be a medical missionary and uh, so I did mention with that in mind and uh, I think bring, going back to that uh, a verse we read you know, glorify God in your body God has a use for our bodies, you know. He, he, no matter what part of him it is, he, he can use our bodies in his service. And uh, I have had the great joy now for over uh, 30 years of serving people in their deepest need, um, providing medical care uh, for those at really life's, life's extremes. And we do it at no cost or almost no cost. You might talk about 5p or 10p. And that's one of the good things about the assembly medical work, what we're talking about today. It is at no cost. It's free. We try to make it like salvation. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of medical care is, is artificially priced. You know, I once said to Brother Ray Williams, who was a doctor in Congo, I said, Ray, I've got a great book for you. I says, it says how to treat, medical or how to treat surgical patients for less than a dollar a day. And Ray was horrified. He says, David, how could anybody ever spend a dollar a day on a surgical patient? And uh, you can do tremendous operations at very low cost. Um, you will get maybe better care in some places, uh, but it will be very, if you go to the cities in, in Zambia, you get very good care. But for most of our people, they would have to be millionaires to do that. They just cannot afford uh, that level of treatment. So when I look at that picture, it reminds me of one thing is that uh, God, two things, God is faithful. He cares for us uh, over those years and God's people are faithful. And I must not forget to thank you all for your goodness to us over so many years. It has been a tremendous privilege to serve the Lord out in Africa. Uh, that's it if you're looking for the air and uh, that's the runway. Uh, where am I here? Uh -huh. 
and that's the hospital building. It's just a small bit, and there's uh, uh, the, the bottom building is the aircraft hangar. Small hospital, 100 beds, but uh, very, very busy. Uh, associated with an assembly, so many of our mission hospitals are associated, they're all associated with an assembly because, uh, first of all, our brethren planted the assembly, and then the medical needs were so great, the next thing was a clinic, and then a clinic would develop into a, a hospital. We have about 12 big mission hospitals in Central Africa and almost no mission doctors. I think I'm correct in saying that amongst the 12, I would be the only missionary doctor uh, there. And so that, that's something to pray for, that God might touch the hearts of young people who are medically qualified, doctors and nurses, the tremendous need in, in these places. Um, I can't go into all the details of the assembly work, I would like to, but the assembly is much like here. And uh, you got some very interesting people in it. And this is Kenneth. Uh, Kenneth was a, an old brother with, uh, he had leprosy. And Kenneth's feet were twisted, he, he couldn't walk. He, his hands were twisted, he couldn't move them. And the leprosy had destroyed his eyes. And in the morning, Sunday morning, when it came for the breaking of bread, Chris Brundage would bring him down and carry him into the meeting. And he would sit there and they would, somebody would put the bread to his lips and the, and the cup. And you would think that never was a man in more pitiful condition. And yet when you heard that man thank God, to thank God for his son and for salvation and for the blessings that God had given them. And without a trace of, you know, it just came right from his heart. And it made me ashamed any time I felt uh, inclined to uh, complain. And I trust it might maybe cheer up somebody up today. There are many people in our, life, in our world who are much, much worse than us. I hear about the cost of living crisis. Every one of the people in our area would just love to have a cost of living crisis. They just, they, nobody has very, they have very, very little money. And uh, anyway, Kenneth got COVID. And he was in the hospital for a few days, and then he, um, he seemed to get better. We sent him home to his little house here, and he, uh, sadly, after a couple of days, he, he went to be with the Lord. But what a transformation to go from that state into the presence of the Lord of glory. And it's uh, wonderful what salvation does in, in human lives. Some assemblies are small like this, that's rift, mud bricks. That's the, this is what we call the conference center. And you can see the, uh, this whole area here. It used to be all leprosy, but leprosy has been replaced by HIV. We have about 240 patients now in HIV treatment. The Northern Ireland has just over 1,100 patients in total. So, and we are a small hospital, so you can imagine how much HIV there is in Zambia. It's about 10% of the population. But this was leprosy, and Gordon and myself and others, we decided to convert these houses into um, places for Christians coming in from a distance. So some Christians come from a long distance away, um, say for a conference. Nobody has a car, so they need somewhere to stay if they're there for two or three days. And all these houses have been converted, and. Uh, uh, it's a very nice place now. In fact, there's a camp for uh, girls going on there at the moment. Uh, Dorothy would say for senior girls. This is Gordon, uh, the photo Gordon and Ruth. The photograph is a bit uh, old, so he's not just as uh, young looking maybe as, a, but he's hard to get a photograph of Gordon. But him and Ruth, um, Gordon's the administrator, and really he's been the one largely responsible for the development of so much of Chitoka Loki. It's as if the hospital uh, and the mission there are his baby almost, you know. So if you crack a tile, say, in the operating theater, you tell Gordon and it's repaired magically just, uh, you know, within 24 hours or so. So he's a great love for that. And uh, his wife, Ruth, works at the, um, uh, with the woman as well. Uh, so uh, remember Gordon and Ruth Hanna. Gordon's father was Richard Hanna, commanded from the Lurgan Assembly to Chile many years ago. His brother still uh, works in, uh, in Chile. I think his brother's Dennis. Uh, and we built, that's the center, little building in that conference center. 
Uh, Dorothy, 20, Dorothy's 75, and she's out at uh, on the out on the countryside many days doing um, uh, either doing medical work or t teaching women from the how to read the scriptures and so on. So pray for Dorothy. She's not as fit as she used to be. She took this girls' camp about two, uh, three months ago, and uh, she um, saw two girls saved at that. And now she's having another meeting at the moment uh, with, I think, uh, smaller girls probably. Uh, this is Hannah, uh, Hannah Wallace with her Sunday school class. The Sunday school is at eight o'clock in the morning, and we thank God for, for that work as well. Her and Alison do uh, uh, that Sunday school work. That's Shabuma. Shabuma's just had their 100th anniversary. And what I'm trying to give you an idea of is the amount of work that's going on just in that small triangle. And, you know, it's very, very small. Shavuma, uh, 100th anniversary, mission was started in 1922, and they had these meetings just in August. Um, our 100th anniversary was from uh, 2014. So um, we thank God for these things. Uh, I'll just speak about the two Japanese girls there. Uh, Tamako and Ayumi are the two nurses. Tamako sailed through our brother Jim Curry out in Japan, and Ayumi sailed there as well. And God calls them to work in Zambia. Uh, and they've been both running the hospital, very often without a doctor, uh, over the last 10 years or so, a long time. So do pray for Tamako and Ayumi. That's Martha in the middle there. Uh, she teaches in the school. Um, hospital work is, uh, needs a lot of structure, it's not something you can walk into a hut and start. Maybe you could, but it wouldn't be very efficient. So we've got solar panels now. We have um, the borehole water, and it's very, very nice setup at Chitogoloki. We were green a long time before anybody here. We had those solar panels. And now you can only run a hospital, as I say, because of the backup. And uh, this is from our brother Kenneth Craig up there. Uh, they send containers out to us several times a year, and there's one going out, I think it's the 26th, he told me. Just a hint if anybody's free to do some packing of these things. It's uh, coming up soon anyway. And it's unbelievable what that difference that makes. Uh, and that's what makes our hospitals different from any other hospital, is the backup we have from outside. And we get gauze, we get all sorts of surgical instruments, equipment, etc., etc. As patients come to us from all over. Sometimes we get visitors. Uh, this is brother Thomas Wallace and his wife uh, June and uh, uh, Anna there again, Dr. Ross Jefferson. We're thankful for visitors to make it cheer us up immensely. Um, that's Stephen fixing the lorries. All the lorries are a huge job. Stephen spent most of last year during COVID traveling the five, four, five hundred miles between us and the Copper Belt, bringing up the supplies. That's Sean preaching uh, in the open air. Well, we try to, there's a lot of preaching all the time, either around this connected with the assembly. And on Sunday, the assembly gospel message at nine o'clock, it goes from the, like here, it's, it goes by shortwave radio over to the hospital. So you have about 100 people in the hospital hearing the gospel message uh, every Sunday. And then in the hospital itself, we have a similar system. And there's speakers scheduled from Monday to Saturday to preach the gospel for 10 to 15 minutes um, at, the, um, at that, uh, the microphone. And I, I do Friday, um, uh, usually in, in Lunda that is. Um, parcels come, have to be sorted, and uh, Lorraine is very busy. I, I, I don't take time to go into her work today, but just to say our wives uh, uh, on mission work in Africa are just as busy as we are. And uh, it takes a lot of work to sort those parcels, bring everything up to the hospital, and put it in a place where it's fine. But that's only one of multiple tasks. Uh, Laurie came from Northern Ireland. And uh, this is Medical Missionary News. We're very thankful for the things that we get from, out the, from Medical Missionary News. It, me medicines are the lifeblood of the hospital. And uh, these would come out to us uh, uh, several times a year. That's the Spicinger family, Joey and Caitlin. Joey's the airplane mechanic, and Caitlin a nurse. And uh, all of their, their four children. Keith and Gail uh, run a 
dormitory for girls, and that's uh, the girls. Uh, and uh, during term time, these girls will stay in this dormitory, and Keith will have meetings for them. Friday night, they have a little gospel meeting, get together. And a number of the girls could see it. And uh, very often when they go away, they look back, uh, send them letters if they trusted the Lord afterwards. This is Rodney and Margaret Strachan. Rodney's a radiologist and his wife is a teacher. They, I, I was in Balamoni one night and they um, got to the door and the brother says, do you, do you, somebody in Australia wants to know, do you have any place for a radiologist in your mission hospitals in Africa? And so we got in touch with Rodney. Rodney came out and he digitalized all our x-rays. That was the first thing he did. And then he, um, so what happens now is I can get an x-ray done in the morning uh, of a patient at 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock say. It goes straight to Australia on the internet. Rodney, Australia is 12 hours ahead of us. So Rodney's just coming off his work. He reports on it immediately. And the patient can be going home at 11 o'clock with an official report uh, from a consultant radiologist. And so a lot of our services are, are pretty good. Uh, Simon Porter from Banbridge has started to help him with that. And he's very thankful uh, for, for that help. I think the Loma Hospital in Shavuma and places have joined in as well. Do pray for this man, Dr. Felix Chibwe. He's been the big bright spot in my last two years because he's a very gifted Zambian surgeon. He's a lovely brother in the assembly. He can preach uh, a great uh, either gospel or great ministry and would do anywhere. So uh, do pray for him. We hope that he will stay with us. His wife's Nosia and they have two children uh, who go to Sakeji School. But if you don't remember much else that I say today, remember Dr. Felix. And uh, it's been a big uh, sharing of workload that I, now. Those are the surgical procedures. This year we're over well over a thousand already, and uh, it's a busy, very active place. Um, how, do you describe, how do you describe the hospital? Well, you, you can't really, but you, you go in in the morning and you, we start at 7.30 and anything can be happening. You do a ward round. You can see almost any type of surgery, hernias, prostates, hysterectomies, <laughs> you name it. And that's, you know, all those patients are in the wards and then you um, have, uh, the children's ward, Dr. Ross usually looks after that, but it's just uh, chock-a-block with ch children. Into the maternity ward is the same, little premature babies and, you know, like neonates and things like that. Um, all in one building, if you can imagine that, but different rooms. But, um, and we try to keep the gospel central to it all. So a lot of our, build a lot of our um, uh, walls in the hospital have got texts We've lots of um, a, tracks, we have Bibles everywhere, or, or certainly in certain places. And uh, if patients getting surgery, well then we have, uh, we always pray for the patient uh, during, the, uh, during the surgery, or before the surgery. Well, that's the sort of operating list. It keeps you busy. Uh, Lorraine sometimes assists with operating if uh, I can't find anybody else. <laughs> the, uh, she's, she's very good actually I mean, that's a joke um, the, uh, lots of operations cataracts here we do this we, we, uh, this is three cataract patients uh, done John Chiland is a good brother he uh, is very uh, this is him here sorry I'm watching this one <laughs> and, and then this is Mark and uh, oh, sorry this one's um, Mark uh, Grattan and his wife Joanne and uh, their ch uh, Eloise. Um, they're based in Lusaka. Do remember them in prayer as well. Uh, Mark does aircraft engineering and Joanne comes up to us every, yeah, they've come up about twice a year now since they came. And Joanne does glasses, so a lot of our patients can get glasses and so on. Brass tacks have had a, a huge input at the place, so I can't go into that now. Then our uh, Philip first. Uh, Phil Kennedy first met this child in Angola when he was doing in the hospital at Mary, at Mary Ratters. He's come back and uh, he found the child had got to a look at getting his leg fixed. Uh, remember uh, Julie Rachel, huge hard working person. JR can do anything a doctor can do. Works night and day really. She's probably the hardest worker amongst us I would say. 
and uh, you know, very gifted in all the maternity work. Dr. Ross is a very gifted uh, pediatrician. She's there half time, part, mostly there and sometimes at home then. But she, she's about 30 beds in the children's ward. She looks after them. If she's not there, then they fall back, uh, they fall back to us. Uh, we often ask our patients, why do you come to Jatokaloki? And they say, well, it's because of the care you give us, because of the love you show to us. And that, I think, is a very high uh, recommendation, so it is. Uh, anything, let's just, there's uh, lots of tracks. Brother Martin there, and Juana. Juana's a nurse, does a lot of uh, evangelism work around the hospital. And he recently had a thing for young men. He uh, took them through Bible studies, and they trusted the Lord. Uh, two, of, two or three of them trusted the Lord. They were baptized last year, and now in the assembly, and uh, doing a good work for God. Lots of children, pediatrics, malaria, the blood transfusion, the life of the flesh is the blood thereof, still through today. Uh, patients with uh, Bibles in the ward. Uh, nurses, the uh, government send uh, 20 to 30 nurses every few months, and so every Tuesday and Thursday, either me, Gordon, or Dr. Chiway will have a little gospel meeting there, just for 10 to 15 minutes, and uh, they, they, we, they get the gospel in. This is Chris and Alison. Chris is our pilot, Alison a nurse, and uh, they do a lot of work. Chris uh, is often away flying. The, the plane is a, is, a great, uh, is a great thing, and uh, we uh, often would uh, make use of it. Used to fly to, to visit Betty here every Monday. COVID has hit that quite a bit, but uh, we would go in every Monday, and uh, I was, I'll talk about Betty this afternoon. See, I've never run out of time, and it would take several hours to tell you everything about Betty. But uh, it's just been wonderful to work with her. You know, we're both from Banbridge, and uh, Betty, uh, Betty and me uh, uh, are from the, the assembly there. And uh, so we commit uh, the following to you. Time is gone, as usual. Um, that's, uh, I'll come back to Josh here this afternoon. Prayer points, pray, be thankful and encourage at the work that's going on at Chitoka Loki. I, I, I didn't say, but you know, hospital work is 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. It never stops. So every day, every minute of every day, there's something happening there, uh, something going on, and somebody talking to somebody about the Lord. And so do, do be thankful. Pray for Dr. Felix. Pray for the building up of the assemblies. Brother Jeff Spicinger had an accident. I didn't go into that, but remember that. Uh, I pray for De De Balata. Now that Betty has gone, it's a huge, huge gap, a huge chasm. Uh, but pray for uh, Betty settling in at home. And pray for Mark and Janelle Highcup who are taking up the work there. And pray for health and strength for us all. We're all getting older, and it's not, uh, it doesn't always feel so good. But what's the point of doing, you know, why do we do the medical work? It brings so many people in under the sound of the gospel. And i just give you two things. Um, I was standing the other day talking to Sister Rhoda, who's very good at personal work. And Rhoda said, she says, I want to tell you about this man, doctor. This was a very religious man. He was trusting in his church for salvation. But he has just realized that he needs to trust in Jesus and that man had found the Lord at Chitokaloki Hospital. Uh, about a month ago, before I came, I was standing in the ICU unit. We had lost a patient after much, much uh, trying, over a year and a half. A man, he had a thing in his, his, his throat. And I was standing there, rather dejected, to be honest, in the ICU. And uh, Rhoda came up and says, why are you sad, doctor? She says, you do remember, don't you, that six weeks ago, he trusted the Lord. And she said, I told him, I talked to him yesterday, and he was very firm in his salvation, and he knew that he was going to heaven. And that was just before he, he died. Um, just last night, I was, uh, Dr. Ross said, she told me, two boys, two young boys have professed to trust the Lord this week at the, at the hospital. And she, one was a little boy, David, who has a huge facial tumor, and it was spreading all over his face. We finally got a biopsy of it. And he was able to get some chemotherapy, which has reduced it considerably. But it's wonderful that he has now been spurred to trust the Lord. And she said, another little boy from Portugal, 
he, he came up to her and he said he very politely walked up to her and shook her hand and said that he had trusted Jesus uh, that day so or that week. So we thank God for all those things and we thank God for your care and your support and fellowship over uh, many years now. Thank you. We hope you're encouraged and inspired and ready to answer the call. Thank you for listening.